Hey, how's it going? My name's Nat. Let's see what's making news. As the global space race continues, NASA has been handed one very important task. And to tell us more about it, let's cross to Josh, who's live on the moon. Josh. Hey, Nat, how's it going? Tell us, what time is it there for you right now? Yeah, the time here is, um... Uh... It's the time, Josh. It's not that hard. Uh... What time is it on the moon? Well, the thing is, no one really knows. And that's because the moon doesn't actually have its own timekeeping system. So the White House has just tasked NASA with fixing that. Whew. By giving the moon and other celestial bodies their own time zone named Coordinated Lunar Time! Wait, 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 no, hang on. Why couldn't you just bring a regular Earth clock to the moon and then, hey, problem solved? Uh, not quite. You see, the difference in gravity means that time moves at a little bit of a different speed on the moon. So your Earth clock would actually lose 58.7 microseconds per day. Well, but that's barely anything. Uh, yes, yes. But as more and more time passes, uh, things would get really out of whack. And that's not good, because missions to space need to be incredibly precise. And the hope is that Coordinated Lunar Time will make future communications between spacecrafts, satellites, bases and astronauts a whole lot easier. But what won't be easy is actually implementing it. Experts say we may need to deploy atomic clocks on the lunar surface, which basically measure tiny changes in atoms to determine the most accurate time. They're aiming to have have some sort of solution ready by 2026. So watch this space. <laughs> Back to you, Nat. Samantha Mostyn has been named Australia's next Governor General. The Governor General is basically King Charles' representative here in Australia and makes sure the country is run according to our constitution. And I can think of no greater purpose, Prime Minister, than to serve this country I love as Governor General. Ms Mostyn isn't in the top job just yet. She'll replace David Hurley in July, who's been in the role since 2019. A monument in Sydney has been rededicated to recognise the Bedigal people, and it's partly thanks to these two, Lionel and Ella. Check it out. Right here at Elwood Oval, Lionel and Ella discovered something pretty important. It was COVID lockdown. Then we came to the park for a play and then we spotted the plaque. And it said it wasn't the Betty Cool people, it said it John Parks was the first person on this land, on this park. John Parks was an early European settler and the monument commemorates him as the original landowner. But to Lionel and Ella, that wasn't right. We told Mum about it when we were walking home and she said we should write a letter to the council. And that's just what they did. They hand wrote a letter to the council asking for the plaque to be changed. John Parks didn't find the land first, it was Aboriginal land. Could you change the sign at Elwood Oval so it says the Bedigal people please? Two years later their request was granted, with the new plaque honouring the Bedigal people as enduring custodians, which was unveiled last month. What we really didn't want to do was remove the plaque. The to repeat that act of erasure or cancelling of someone else's story is not something that we would like to do. They were the first people here and it's important to know about their culture. Now it's time to meet two young skateboarders from Queensland who have got their sights set on competing in this year's Olympics. Meet Arissa. Ever since she saw skateboarding at the Tokyo Olympics a few years back, she realised she wanted to give it a crack. At 13 years old, she's on track to become one of Australia's youngest ever Olympians. Well, my ultimate goal for the Olympics is a gold medal or a podium, so I'm hoping I can do that, but I just have to train really hard. Also in the running to qualify is 14-year-old Chloe. Yeah, when I was a kid and started to do skating and got better and better, I definitely did hope to go to the Olympics one day. And what's more exciting is if Arissa or Chloe do get a medal, they'll be the youngest Aussies ever to win one at the Olympics, breaking a 68-year-old record. Well, that's all we've got time for today. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye for now. <laughs> OK, here we go. <laughs>